Red is a play about uh, Mark Rothko, who was a famous uh, 20th century abstract expressionist painter. And what happens is a completely Logan-created character of a young man named Ken arrives in the studio for an interview as a position to be Rothko's assistant. Stand closer. We've got to stand close. This play deals with the two years he was painting what have become known as the Seagram's murals. It's really a story of his artistic journey. It's a story about money and art, but mostly it's a story about his relationship with his protege, who's his assistant, Ken. And it's about a young man's relationship with an old man, a student and a teacher, a son and a father. Where is the arbitration that separates what I like from what I respect? I play Mark Rothko, the abstract expressionist painter. He was uh, probably the most influential and maybe most famous American painter that many people don't know. Let the picture do its work. When you're doing this play, which is, requires a great deal of two actors who hold the stage for 90 minutes, they never leave the stage, they're never off stage. It's essentially two actors for the full time. You need two remarkable actors. Ed Jarrow is a Washington, D.C.-based actor. And I met him while working on King Lear in 2006, and he played Gloucester brilliantly. And as I was thinking about actors who could play this, he really was, and I can honestly say this, the first and only actor that came to mind. We work hard here. This is no goddamn old world salon with tea cakes and lemonade. And on the other hand, I had Jack seen Hill. Patrick Andrews work, and he holds the stage with a powerful and remarkable for his age stillness, confidence, and power. Apollo is the god of order, method, and boundaries. This is Rothko. Intellectual, rabbinical, sober, restrained. The raw experience leavened by contemplation. Rothko had assistants his entire career, and I knew I wanted to write a play about a young man and an old man, so it seemed an obvious idea to create a fictional assistant who could, who could be his, uh, his sounding board. Exactly right but for entirely missing the point. How so? You missed the tragedy. The point is always the tragedy. And I always wanted this to be a work play. I didn't want it to be two men standing around talking about art. You know, I wanted it to be what painters actually do in a studio. You all help me uh, stretch the canvas, mix the paint, and clean the brushes and may build the stretchers and help me paint the ground cover, which is not painting. And I wanted to give the audience a, a chance to see what it is really like inside a painter's studio. Well, the rehearsal process is really, it's for just the two of us, it's a, it makes for a long day. And we're on our feet for eight hours. We're in a hermetically sealed <laughs> rehearsal hall, you know, and it's a pretty intense process. And then while you're still contemplating, he starts that cross in. Got it. And you're still his eye on him because the weight is not in movement. There is pressure, I feel, on it being just two of us. Mm. But at the same time, it's interesting that because it is just two of us, sometimes I feel there's a, a freedom to take our time. There are so many examples and culture of radical change happening. And I think Logan is exploring pressure cooking all of that into uh, one art studio like that it? happens to be Rothko and an assistant. Yes. Of course you like it. What struck me most about Rothko as a dramatic character was he's like one of his paintings, light and dark, red and black. There are two dissonant parts of his personality. He could be focused and intellectual and turn an idea around. On the other hand, he could be like a stick of dynamite, so explosive and volcanic in his passions and his emotion. I'm not your shrink. I'm not your father. I am not your friend. I am not your teacher. I am your employer. The most flattering things ever said to me about Red was that the play spoke to people who had no, nothing to do with art, who, who, who had no interest in painting or in art, but there's something universal about, in the best of all possible worlds, about the relationship between those two characters that speaks to people. Just the sheer fun of having two wonderful actors in the rehearsal room on a play that is challenging on a lot of levels, intellectually, emotionally, physically, musically, 
Uh, it just has a lot to offer. Thank you.